Good evening, and thank you for joining us tonight for our Village of Alsa committee meeting. Today is June 12th, 2023, and we'll call this meeting in order at 7.30 p.m. Can you call the roll, please? Oh, I'm sorry, before we get started, our regular clerk isn't available this time, so our office supervisor is willing to sit in as clerk. I need a motion of second to approve Eric O'Donnell to be the clerk this evening. I'll make that motion. Trustee Hazel? Yes. Trustee Mendoza is absent. Trustee Baldwin? Yes. Trustee Murphy? Yes. Trustee Navas-Barza is absent, and Trustee Brown? Yes. Thank you. Please join us for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. So, everyone in the audience understands, too, we do record all of our meetings. The cameras are faced on us. You guys look great. And also, should anyone need to refer back to anything that is said here this evening, certainly you can always access it on YouTube. And we put these up by tomorrow afternoon on our Pledge of Allegiance site as well, too. So, we'll start with our officer's report, starting with mine. First on our agendas this evening is a request for approval of a resolution of the Village of Alsip, Cook County, Illinois, authorizing interventions and proceedings before the State of Illinois Property Tax Appeal Board. What this is, you saw in your packets, our current law firm, one of the law firms that represents us at Odelson, and they've got a new name now, and Mark Stark isn't there anymore. Let me get the name of the firm real quick. And as far as intervention goes with the property tax appeal, whenever there's a property tax appeal, we are represented by Odelson, Murphy, Frazier, McGrath, and Murphy. So, all we need to do, I believe it's every two years, we need to reaffirm that they are going to represent our interest in a property tax appeal. And that's all this is. Right now, they do a great job doing so, and they also represent some of the other local taxing bodies, like District 218 High Schools, and we actually share the invoice with them when they do the work for us. That's what that was for. Any questions on that? Yeah, we... For the record, that's no relation. Right. We have to change the dates in it, Mayor. Dates in here are May, rather than going to be June. And the first whereas talks about the village of Alsip, Cook County, Illinois, and then in parentheses, the A village at sign. Oh, thank you. I'm looking at that right now. Okay. And then, I know that they've represented us in the past, but I thought that we specifically followed along with whatever, if the school district initiated it, then we went along with it. This is kind of like an open book, so I don't understand this. I was just told that these particular agreements have to just be reaffirmed every couple of years. And they actually did have, for what it's worth, not that any impact is the same firm, but they did, the firm slightly modified their name with losing one of the partners recently and stuff like that. But I think in the past before, we've had recommendations, and then we would go ahead and authorize our intervention into it, based upon the school district or if somebody else brought it out, rather than us doing it on our own accord. Exactly. It's status quo. It's the same thing with that. Okay. So this is just an agreement saying they can negotiate for us, but not that we're agreeing to any settlements at this point. Exactly. Well, it's just inside one of the whereas, it talked that they 
it just seemed like it was a law firm that had the ability to sit there and just do it automatically without a yes from you. I understand. Again, it was explained to me that it was just a formality. All right. Thank you. Secondly, number two, rather, on your agenda was a request for approval of an ordinance of the village of Allsup approving a Class 7C assessment status for the real estate located at 11458 South Cicero Avenue, PIN number 2421-200-050 in the village of Allsup, Cook County, Illinois. This is the proposed, well, it's, you can probably get an update from us here this evening from Cook Run Shell Station. And that's, I know we gave preliminary approval to create a liquor license. I know you gave up, you gave us a more review maybe a month or so ago for this assessment. Again, a 7C assessment is a reduction in taxes for up to five years. The first three years is, they're assessed at 10% of the property market value, and then it goes up to 12% and then 15%. And then after your sixth year, you're back at 25%. Again, this is a project that, Frank, can you give us a quick update on where your project's at right now? Yes. Hello, my name is Parm. I'm building the gas station at 11458 South Cicero Avenue in Allsup. So currently, guys, we're doing final engineering on the building that we had presented a month and a half ago. We are going into details, what kind of tiles, what kind of building material, what kind of roofing material. So that's almost going to be all done in two weeks. And our plan is to submit for the plan for permits. And we have talked with Illinois EPA about the site cleanup we have to do. The site was approved for a clean. And back in 2019, there was a corrective action plan that was proposed to clean the site. But nobody ever did anything about it. And we are proposing the same corrective action plan to clean up the site, which is we got to do some more testing on certain areas to see how far the contamination is. There's already a lot of testing done, but they're requiring more testing. There's a concrete barrier we have to build at a certain spot to, you know, make sure that it doesn't saturate the soil. So we're willing, our plan, the one we're building that we have proposed already does all of that. There's already a concrete barrier, like, which is like a concrete surface. So we're already doing all those. There is an ordinance that would need to be passed about no, obviously no groundwater use allowed there in the future. No residential property be developed on that parcel ever. So those are some helps we would need regarding the ordinance to satisfy the Illinois EPA requirements. But we have done the same thing at another project in Olympia Fields, Illinois, where we were building the gas station while we were cleaning up the site. And just this week, we got a draft NFR letter. We satisfied Illinois EPA requirements for that site in Olympia Field. So I feel very confident we can do the same thing here in Allsup. And so currently, we're two weeks away from finishing our final plans. Our site's been approved by Shell to franchise over there for the oil. Site plans are all done. We're waiting on Illinois DOT. That's the one that we always have to be waiting on a lot. But we feel confident we will get some kind of access there. So we feel confident we can start building the building this year. We're not planning on pushing this to next year. And while the building shell is done, the storefront is put in, we can keep working on the inside throughout the winter. And so, you know, one of the requirements the bank is wanting, they want to feel comfortable with this project, is a 7C, you know, 
we're asking for for the property tax, they feel like that will get us established uh, pretty well because we have these extra costs associated with cleanups and uh, so if we could get that break that would be greatly appreciated so we're looking to get this done we've been pushing hard guys every week we do about 20 30 calls about this and uh, um, the tanks have been ordered so the gasoline tanks that are going to be going underground they'll be arriving in 60 days about two months and uh, so a lot of stuff's been happening and we're on our end we don't want to wait two three four years to build this and we want to get it done soon. Understood. That was a conversation that we had when you were here, like a month and a half ago. Yeah. Um, we decided the um, remediation uh, cost. Obviously, we've been blessed to have a lot of development here in our community over the last handful of years, but um, it does come with an unforeseen cost yet, too. Like in the property that you're going to be building on used to be a gas station. Yes. And, um, again, we look forward to uh, some people fresh going there. The whole idea of using incentives is to cure blight. And certainly you're curing a blighted spot that's been laying like that for at least like the last nine, ten years and stuff like that too. So. Yes, I believe if we if we don't do a fuel store there, I don't see how any business would be able to justify the costs and every yeah, so with the gas station, that's the only way I s foresee somebody taking on the cost. They could be anywhere from 150,000 minimum is what is average, but each site is different. It could be 300,000, so prices are all over, but we're willing to go ahead, uh, just like with the Olympia Field location in Illinois, we're willing to go ahead and whatever it takes to get this done. And again, at the Locations ideal for east and west travelers because you're not going to see gas until you get to Harlem in the west and Kenzie in the east there too. So. Yes, exactly. It's a pretty big area that we're going to be covering. We're looking forward to it. Right. Uh, trustees, any questions for the Well, thank you very much for the update, Carmen. And, and um, certainly I'll put, I'll put this on the agenda next week to ask for a formal approval okay. and uh, good luck with the project. So, thank you so much. Yes. Uh, I have just a couple other things here too. Just a quick note to share on my report. Uh, I did uh, myself and Mike Freider, uh, our public works superintendent. We we did contact a uh, concrete slab uh, company contractor, and we are going to for about thirteen hundred dollars. We can straighten out the sidewalks outside the police station area too. So we're going to get that going. Nice. And then, um, oh, our attorney, um, uh, I'm sorry, I'm not let trustee, trustee um, Mark speak to that. And that's all I have for tonight's uh, presentation. Before we go further, uh, I'm, I'm just in the interest of everyone's time, we got a, a, a large group of uh, folks to present through <coughs> and the um, building department. Um, Yes, thank you, Mayor. Uh, this evening we have a presentation by Opus for two potential warehouse buildings along 118th Street and I believe Menard Avenue. Um, gentlemen, if you would introduce yourself and. Um, thank you. Uh, my name is Mike Robinson. I'm with Opus Development Company. Um, I also have with me uh, Matthew Etchison. He's with Opus Architecture and Engineering. Um, I have uh, uh, Ryan Blocker from Jacob and Hefner. He's our civil engineer. And then Ryan Mahoney and uh, Craig Kinmatsu, uh, Opus Design Build, which is our general contractor. Um, do we have a clicker? Yes, yeah, Roger. Do you have oh, you got Okay. okay. So, I'll, I'll just, so uh, first, uh, you can, I'll just give you a heads up on the one. You can switch that mic a little bit if you have to. Sure. There you go. Yeah. So. Um, First, I'll tell you a little bit about Opus, uh, uh, the Opus development project team, and then I'll introduce the site plan, and then I'll have uh, Ryan Blocker from Jacob and Hefner, uh, who's our civil engineer. He'll discuss the, or, or give a high level over, overview of the Plata subdivision and the landscape plan, and then Matthew Etchison will hit some highlights on the elevations here. So, um, uh, so Opus, uh, we are this year we're celebrating our 70, 70th year. Um, we have eight offices. We're headquartered in Minneapolis. Um, the, uh, I'm in the Chicago office. Matt's in the Chicago office. Ryan and Craig are also in the Chicago office. Um, the, the Chicago office handles southeastern Wisconsin, greater Chicago area, northwest Indiana, and Michigan. 
Uh, Opus, uh, the structure of Opus, we have three separate companies uh, that are all under one umbrella. Uh, Opus A&E is our architecture. Uh, Opus Design Build is our general contractor. Uh, and Opus Development Company is, is development, and that's the part I'm in. And so we're all in the same office here. Um, Opus Development Project Team, don't need to go into detail about this, uh, but there's uh, Brett uh, and myself handle the industrial uh, for Opus, and then uh, Mike Youngerman heads up all the development in Chicago. Um, <clears throat> one thing to note on the development, we also do other product types. We do multifamily, we do senior housing, uh, we do student housing, um, and, and so, but I'm focused 100% on industrial. So, uh, introducing our, our, our site here uh, is this is a two building, one phase uh, uh, spec development. Uh, uh, the north building is, is 188,000 square feet and the south building is 169,000 square feet. And uh, one thing I'd like to point out is, is uh, we would be extending the road to Austin, uh, Austin Avenue in, in this development. So uh, we are um, going through our due diligence right now. Uh, we are targeted to be uh, finished with that and hopefully closed, uh, putting a shovel on the ground maybe around November um, is, is our hopes. It's going to depend on getting through, uh, getting our permits from uh, uh, for disturbing the wetlands and, and whatnot and, and having those national permits. So uh, we have not applied for those yet and those, it'll, be, it'll take, it'll depend on the timing of those. Um, the buildings, uh, they'll, they'll both be uh, 32 foot clear uh, and um, We'll have uh, modern uh, 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 dimensions for uh, truck maneuverability in, in the truck courts and, and plenty of parking for the tenants. Um, so uh, we build first-class buildings, and when we do that, we expect first-class tenants. And um, in my experience, that's you build a first-class building, you'll get that first-class tenant. So uh, there will be good uh, tenants that will be moving into Elsip. So uh, next slide, please. So I'll... I'll Introduce uh, Ryan Blocker, and, and he can talk about uh, Flat Assembly. Thank you. Yeah, hello, everyone. Um, Ryan Blocker, Jake Hefner, as Mike said, civil engineer on the project. Uh, won't get into too many details, obviously, here to answer questions. But uh, on the Plata subdivision, essentially, as Mike said, there's two buildings, so they're going to create two separate lots on a current, the current parcel. Um, it's essentially the dividing line is going to be the center line of the existing IHB rail track that kind of bisects the property there through the middle. Uh, they do have an easement that will be retained there. So the sites will sort of operate separately. Uh, there will be some easements for the two to share some stormwater management, uh, utilities to cross. We'll need a couple of pipe crossings on the rail. We've already sort of started that discussion with them. Um, but so each site will sort of <coughs> operate independently from access. The north building will have it from 118th, and then the south building off of the Austin Avenue extension that Mike said we're connecting at both ends to kind of complete that corridor. Um, so I think that's probably it for the plat. And then on the landscape plan, um, again, trying to focus the, the trees and the landscaping on the frontages, the office areas of the buildings, um, and the entrances, kind of the high visible areas of the site. Um, and then, of course, filling in some of the landscape islands and other things in the car parking areas to provide shade trees, those type of things that are pretty typical. Uh, and then you can see the, the two uh, detention basins that will be connected via pipe under the rail. Um, and those we plan to be more native, naturalized detention basins with some wetland-type plants, um, kind of nice-looking, um, and serve the drainage for both projects. The outlet all goes, and all the drainage for both properties essentially goes south, and then there's a large culvert that goes under the interstate uh, where it continues south. I think that's it for me. Good evening. My name is Matthew Etchison. I'm an architect with the Opus Group. Both these buildings are going to be constructed of smooth, painted, precast concrete panels, nominally about nine and a half inches thick with horizontal reveals and accents of horizontal and vertical paint. The wall panels will meet the energy code requirements for insulated panels. This is building A. It's just over 39 feet tall at its highest point near the main offices. It has a single pitched roof that pitches back towards the truck court where storm water is controlled through internal downspouts and overflow scuppers. As the roof slope decreases, the precast wall panels will step down 
in a complementing fashion to their lowest height, which is going to be about 35 feet along the dock wall. The color scheme uses a mix of blue, blue gray. <laughs> Interfering with the microphone. Uh, the paint scheme is blue, blue gray, and white tones, which are popular in industrial buildings around in these markets. Uh, as you can see, that the office proposed office areas for the buildings are going to be accented with that bracket of color, which kind of shows where the limits of the offices exist. There's going to be a storefront uh, entrance and a canopy that welcomes users to the building. Uh, highlights will be the uh, horizontal banding of paint. There's going to be some uh, kind of a gradual increase of horizontal reveals, kind of help break down the scale. And the vertical colors of blue and gray will relieve the length of the building. Uh, features include punched window openings in the office areas that allow natural light into open offices and private offices, as well as clear story windows that are going to be on all facades of the building. You can skip ahead to the other elevations. This is a look at the dock wall elevation. Dock doors will come with dock seals, and there will be two drive-in doors at each end of the building. Uh, we're assuming in a speculative nature that this might get split between two tenants each. So we provide drive-in doors for each tenant, both on the north and the south, and a number of docks, as well as future dock opportunities. Um, I think the coming in with about one dock per 10,000 square feet originally, and uh, with opportunities to add more docks if the user needs it. Let's get the next slide. Uh, building B, uh, similar to building A in paint scheme, um, uh, they both kind of uh, have the same architectural look to kind of complement the campus feel of the two sites. Uh, it's going to be slightly shorter. It's not as deep a building, so the, the roof pitch allows for a slightly shorter building, but it's got the same general slope back towards the dock area with internal roof drains. Same paint scheme, same clear story windows, uh, but due to uh, site constraints and grading issues, it does have a slightly different office entrance feature. Uh, where on building A to the north, because of its proximity to existing buildings as well as that rail spur, uh, the entrances to the offices uh, for building A are going to be facing north and facing south. Uh, for building B, because we don't have uh, existing buildings or the rail spur, the entrances for those offices are going to be facing to the west, uh, facing the larger parking field. As you can see that in this example of the elevation, the offices that were on the north and the south of Building A elevation are now shown on the west. Um, actually, I think we have a mislabeled elevation there. That should say west elevation for uh, view number one. But materials uh, included in this building, obviously the painted precast, uh, vision glass on the ground level, both vision and uh, spandrel glass uh, on the upper clear story level. Um, we have uh, metal dock stairs. We have uh, hollow metal doors for exiting, and as well as fire department ingress. Thank you. So, um, just a couple of questions. Um, is um, Mr. Barker pointed out that certainly it will be important. That's right. He said certainly it will be important. Like you said, with the landscape, with the uh, southern building, and with the northern view, you have to see much looking looking north. So. Yes, the landscape will really come in handy. That is, uh, certainly it'd be a premier look on the south side of the building. We're looking right at the Tri-State Expressway, and uh, you know, much like your neighbor next, to it, just to the west of you in um, New Farm, and you know, they've got a great view of the Expressway. We should be able to get some there. When we met a couple of months ago, when we first started talking about this. Uh, I wasn't sure, and it, the outline didn't really describe it well. Are you going to get uh, access to go over the tracks too, uh, like there, or are you just going to go around like Boston Avenue and get around? Uh, we would have access to go uh, over the the rail spur there. That yeah, the tracks, yes. But the the building on the south, their main access is going to be that extension. The building on the north is is uh, going to go 118th Street. So, but there still would be that capability. Okay. Um, but. Operationally, they, I don't see them using that. I'm sorry. Yeah, I mean, I think the intention is that with the rail track there, we, they might need a temporary crossing for construction to sort of move earthwork and install utilities and things, but long term, the access is going to be 
controlled south versus north. Understood. Wouldn't make a lot of sense to come through the other buildings, especially since you know both corridors have great access. I mean, the streets all go to the you know central and the east, and um, they're all going to the same areas. Okay, because that was what we were talking about a couple months ago. We weren't, you know, weren't sure, if, like you said, for construction purposes, yes, but on a regular basis to get to the north building, you're going to access that from 118th Street to the south building off of Austin, and then we'll extend, we will extend. also extend the frontage road um, eastbound uh, to access to the property and stuff there too. So uh, you know, what I always want to remind folks is. Uh, everyone kind of gets a little tired of those traffic concerns and getting in and getting out. 122nd Street sometimes does get overwhelming. You know, when they designed it, um, that street used to back up. Lately, it's been pretty good. I live right down the street from there. I'm, I'm just east of the Coca Cola plant there and stuff, and lately it's been pretty good. But um, I think for the most part, the traffic works itself down Austin and in the 115th Street. He's found the Cicero, it's easy to get on the thing and go special because if you're those are let's say class whatever B truck route and all that kind of too where it's easy to access the, the highway and everything too. Um will the dependent act so if there was that the um, and again just to remind folks this is it basically designed for logistic purposes, right? This isn't truck parking or repair or anything. Correct. Yeah, right. no, we don't yeah, no, it's just warehouse distribution. And then um has anyone uh, took a look at the radio for police and fire? Make sure when I mean, you've got a thick pre-classed concrete and a uh, windowless kind of an area. So uh, fire departments on UHF and the uh, police departments on Starcom just want to make sure that whatever you build doesn't prevent the radios from working inside. Yeah, I can speak to uh, the fact that we uh, followed the code, both the International Building Code and the International Fire Code, to make sure that we had proper clearance for fire apparatus vehicles to make uh, 360 degrees around the building, as well as the building is set back for the unlimited area constraints of a building of this size. So we're 60 feet away from the property line. Um, in all areas where that is applicable. Uh, there is one section of the building that dips within that 60-foot setback, but we are still greater than the 40-foot uh, exemption uh, where we need to have a three-hour rated firewall in that case. So uh, we've taken all the necessary uh, steps to make sure that we follow the international guidelines for fire safety. Yeah, I'm talking radio frequency, talking radio operations. So the bi-directional application for the UHF, right. we'll do the testing on that. So okay. once the precast is built or the walls are up, we'll do an internal test to see if there's uh, it's a heat map to yeah. see where we get coverage. We can work with the fire department, police department with that. And then if there is an amplification system that has to be installed, then we'll, at that point in time, we'll address it. Okay. Thank you. But I guess that, that leads me to the question, has this gone to planning and zoning? They have not gone to planning and zoning. It is uh, I-2. It is um, designated properly for the use. Um, the only thing that they would have to go before planning and zoning for would be to subdivide the lots from one to two. Yeah, I, I mean, conceptually, it looks uh, looks beautiful. And certainly, we understand the, the challenges, like you said, with the wetlands and so forth. Then too, that southern property is all wooded right now, so there's certainly going to be a lot of work to clean that up. The northern is bad, but <coughs> excuse me, it's still kind of wooded. And that's for those um what's up there right now, Archer? Is that like um, Radio Disney? Radio Disney. That they've got they've had a couple of poles in the across there. And obviously they're looking they're gonna abandon those on some right? they, Yeah, they, they will. Okay. Yes, yeah, the plan with the seller is they wanted sixty days to shut down their radio operations after we waived due diligence and so and and then so but then we'll be demolishing those towers and they're taking the phase to raise down? Pardon me? They're taking the phase to raise down? The, the four antennas? Yeah. 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 So, uh, the, the seller won't do it. We will do it after we close. Oh. And certainly we, we talked um, with, I talk, talked with Opus um, previously about um, the necessity for 6B um, support as well, too, which certainly with a project like that, uh, again, you're playing on a lot of blood. That's a difficult project to get done. 
and we appreciate your interest in something like this here too. You know, so um, we'll be reaching back out to the board this week to want that. Uh, yeah, and, and, and we've hired a, a tax attorney to help us with the application, and, and so that should be forthcoming. That, so. I think as Trustee Nozell said, and I, I agree, uh, Trustee, when I first saw this a couple months ago when we met, uh, this is a great project. And, you know, for, again, I love to use the word we're blessed because we really have been in our community with the development that takes place here. But your proximity certainly to the expressways and everything else then, too, uh, even safety-wise, th this is an ideal location. You've got some really great um, um, businesses that surround this property at the same time here, too. So, um, I know a few years ago, uh, one of the neighbors over there, they, ch they just changed names. Um, Annexter. Annexter, thank you. I, mean, I, I don't know why, now it's called Westco, right? Uh, they, they did about a $13 million expansion inside of uh, conveyor systems, almost three floors of this. And I was there for the grand, grand reopening. That was a 280,000 square foot facility next door to where just a little bit west of where you folks are. And uh, all these sales folks came in from all across the country. And I'm like, well, why, why this location? This is, you know, it's, it's an ideal location. And it's a safe way we really do. Our, our, our build services are optimal. You know, we, and we really do equip everyone well with equipment area too. But, this is a great, safe community to operate your business and stuff like that, too. So we appreciate your investment here. Thank you. Um, trustees, anything else uh, for the Opus team? So this is going to connect Austin Avenue through? Yes. And we're going to extend the water lines and such? It's ready in place. Oh, cool. Yeah, uh, thank you, Dan. And Dan said, yeah, it's, it's got services out there ready for all the water and everything else. Right. Service and sewer and everything's back here, too? Yes. Good. Okay. Seems like those are always the small challenges. We get smaller parcels sometimes and you can't find that and so forth, but that's great. And that we have all that now, that. Um, I'm also wondering, because is it based on the drawings, uh, the proximity of the railroad tracks to the one building? Are you planning on marketing it if the building is being available for rail service or you know, encouraging use of rail service? It's, it, it's something that we've thought about um, but when when you're building speculatively you don't build a rail serve building speculatively so I think there's a period of maybe a couple months if a rail user were to show some interest in our site um, we could probably talk to them but as soon as we close on the land and and, and start we're gonna build non rail serve building and then we wouldn't we wouldn't use the rail yeah. And, you, you, and again, I know dealing with the railroad is no picnic either. <laughs> right. You know, right. Bring in more rail spur. On. That's really a strong suit of ours, too, on that side of the town. We've got so much rail spur. It's just wonderful to uh, service all that, the um, industrial community back there. But it, it's a great point, Tristan McLaurin, is you know, to say it would be uh, a great spot to service, but if, if you have a, a user that doesn't need it, then you might need something you have to do. Right. So, right. Looks all blocked off with the uh, parking stalls. Right. It, which that would change if if we, you know, there would be a separate plan for the rail serve building. But I really, at this point, I don't think the rail serve building is going to happen. Okay. And is in your plan to continue to own this property and manage it and then we just find tenants to so, use the space? Uh, uh, another good question. So, so Opus is a merchant developer. So what we do is we find the land, we build the building. We lease the building and then we sell, and, but we'll sell to a first-class organization that would probably end up holding it long-term. Um, this one, we might even have a capital partner. Um, we're talking to a, a group right now, um, which would be a very well-known entity, and, and uh, 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 they are a big owner of uh, industrial real estate. So, it, 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 uh, initially, we would have uh, and, until we sell it, we would have. Uh, property manage property management on it right now the the broker is Collier's so Collier's would be the property manager uh, for the site and until it uh, changes hands. Roger, anything else uh, the board needs to know about this? No, I think they've done a great job with supplying us with all the information and the work with Robinson Engineering. Every, everybody here at the village, I think it's a great project, and I would look forward to moving forward with it. Okay. Well, certainly, thank you very much um, for, the, for the presentation. I have one more question. Oh, sure. I was just saying, in relation to the frontage work, because it's based on the, the picture.
pictures in our packet, it, it was hard to tell based on the color. Are we going to, are the plans to extend the frontage road the whole way? Or is it just coming from the 115th direction to the From Austin to uh, one brick of white. So ultimately, all the, the whole way around. And the main thing would be is what they're tying in from the west end down to the east end. Because I know the parcel of property to the right of the picture is not part of this project. Right. So that's why I'm questioning the road extending in, in that area. Well, this way we get a little bit of a relief then, too, as a fire road, per se. Yeah, just to, I mean, if you look on the uh, plat of subdivision, or maybe it's kind of cut off here in the packet, but yeah, it would extend across that parcel to the east. Uh, and then the connection is kind of across the other parcel to the west as well, but ultimately connecting to where the, the road ends on both sides. Um, and I've talked, as uh, mentioned, uh, with Robinson, so it would be built the same specs, village standard for a roadway, um, and we had the same width, everything, so uh, it essentially just complete that roadway. I want to say it's 27 feet, 27 or 28 feet wide. That was always, that was always a, a, a design flaw back in the day where if the properties east of that really could have used something against the expressway. But, uh, certainly it just is a necessity fire road that it is going to be certainly served correctly. But the, the part that comes off of Austin, I, I would assume it would be a little bit wider. It, it should be a little bit wider. Yeah. Okay. Um, that's, all, that's all we have to see. Anybody else have any questions? Mm -hmm. All right, well, thank you very much, Joe, for coming out tonight, and uh, we'll put this on the agenda. Um, I know we had the presentation. We're asking for what? Uh, let's see. We're just making a presentation at this point, okay. um, and then I'll, I'll need to go before planning and zoning um, right. to subdivide the two lots. Subdivide that. We'll approve that and we'll move from there. Correct. Thank you. And then they'll be in for six weeks. Okay. Good luck. Again. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> if you just want to drop a business card, that's fine too. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. My name is Johnson, and I come here today because I live right behind Deuces. Okay. And I was speaking to a police officer, and I asked him, what can I do or what can we do to have a police officer sit there at the end of their nights, like midnight? Well, the Friday, Saturday nights, they close at 2, mm -hmm. where there's usually a lot of stuff going on when they close at 2. People don't know how to leave. <laughs> so it's usually a lot of music, a lot of weed smoking, and I'm in that building right behind Deuces, so okay. I'm facing the lot. So usually I'll call the police and like, hey, can you come and, you know, there's a lot going on over here, and they'll come, but is there any way that we can have or a, a police officer, a, a squad car or whatever can just sit 
outside of Deuces in the back when when they're closing. So people know to go. Just go mm-hmm. to your car and leave <laughs> instead of hanging out, loud music, smoking weed. And, you know, I, it's myself. I have a 12-year-old daughter. So... Ms. Johnson, you're doing a great, certainly a valid, great complaint. Mm-hmm. Uh, I don't want to speak to the police chief because I hear the signal. Trust bells up. Can you offer any, any um, insight into something like that? I mean, there's no way that we can guarantee that we can provide police coverage mm-hmm. at that time every day. Yeah. Chief, I'm sure he could do a special attention or, you know, ask the, uh, the people uh, to check that to make sure and, yeah. you know, maybe get a little forced compliance and people get used to that uh, but yeah. again you can speak for the chief and right. the availability of the uh, I mean as calls come in they have to respond to calls for service so right, right. and the, the police officer I spoke to uh, Friday night mm-hmm. he was over there because there was a fight I guess something was going on over there so they had already called the police and so he was just kind of sitting there making sure nothing else happened over there but and I'm not saying like every weekend, but it's just sometimes it's like, oh my God. And that's just getting hotter. Yeah. You know. Can you do me a favor? Yeah. Uh, we always ask everybody, uh, whoever's going to support, just to sign in. Okay. Can you leave your phone number? Yeah. And, and I'll, I'll ask um, uh, either the chief or the deputy, deputy chief to give us. Okay. And we can talk with you more about that. Too. Perfect. Thank you. Sure. Hopefully, come up with a plan. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. I'll give them a chance to kind of. Look at that. I'll tell them what you're asking about. I'll talk to them tomorrow. Okay. Thank you. Oh, no worries. Thank you for coming. Right. Have a good summer. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Next, uh, we have the um, standing committee reports. Let's start with finance and IT. Trustee McLaurin. Thank you, Mayor. I don't have the list of name on the accounts payable for approval next week. And a um, question for you then. Um, I know our finance director is still getting her feet wet. Um, do we need to potentially set a schedule for any budget meetings? We just talked about that. We're on the same page. We, uh, we talked about it today. And she is reaching out to the department heads. They haven't reviewed what we did. And, um, we're going to kind of start speaking with the board the next week or so. Okay. So we only have something in July. Right. Yeah. And actually, she walked in my office today, and I had all my uh, reports out of uh, what the expenditures were from last year and so forth. So uh, we're doing the best we can. But I'm comparing to what we were where we, where we appropriated and, and where I think we could be. And she's there still working on our revenues. And then on that topic, I know you don't have two department heads here at the moment, but reminder to any department heads that do be this meeting is that at this point in time there is no budget. <laughs> so there is no approved spending. If there's anything unusual, they need to come to the board for approval. I, and they, uh, and I told everyone exactly that uh, about a week or so ago our last staff meeting. We went the last Wednesday of every month, and I told everybody exactly that same time. Yeah. Okay, and that's all I have for um, next, we go to our fire committee report, Trustee Murphy. Um, I have a report uh, in regards to the Station 2 kitchen remodel project, the remodeling of the kitchen and firehouse Station 2 uh, has been completed. The kitchen has been out of service for the last three weeks. Um, and secondly, um, the police department participated in a company picnic on Saturday. Did I say police? Yes, on police. <laughs> Shame on me. The uh, fire department um, participated in a company picnic on Saturday, June 10th, uh, with the crew made a visit, <coughs> made a visit to Minutia uh, on S- Central Avenue, Menasha. What he said, Menasha. Had <laughs> 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 a great night tonight um, <laughs> on Central Avenue for their first annual company picnic. The crew handed out uh, helmets and uh, and a uh, hose prop. Uh, on that same day, the uh, fire department also uh, participated in a McDonald's fries for firefighters on the 10th. Uh, also, fire department had a engine present at the McDonald's for 
prize for firefighters. This is the first year of this event. Many fire departments are partnering with their local McDonald's for this event. And lastly, I know that a lot of trustees did reach out to me in regards to an update on the issue of the fire truck, as well as the $103,307 increase of the proposed contract. That is in the hands of the attorney now, and we will push that off for a couple more weeks and discuss that when we get clarification from the village attorney who is reviewing the contract now. And that's all I have there. Hopefully I'll have a report for you by next week. Eric O'Donnell has been able to find the original RFP that came back to us that included the performance bond and so forth. So we're going to admit that Mike Kanker asked for a couple more days to look at that. So I should hopefully have a report for you. I'll get it to the trustee by next week if Mike gets it right. So that's all we have. Okay, thank you. So we'll go to the police and traffic safety. Trustee Dalzell? Nothing for this evening's agenda, Mayor. Thank you. I will tell you, Trustee, just this morning we're reviewing it right now, but the police chief came and saw me this morning and liked the condition of the ambulance that the fire department replaced. So it's sitting on the back line right now. And he's taking a look at that and possibly repurposing it for a new delegate command vehicle instead of pulling that trailer around and stuff like that. So it's just in the talk stages right now, but he's taking a look at it and see if that would serve the service better. Weren't we going to consider just using that as a backup ambulance since it's already fitted? Exactly. Well, I think we've already got a backup, right? I think they got the two active, and I believe there's a third one already staged. So this thing's number four. This would be the fourth, right. But, yeah, it's in great condition. I looked at it, and I was just getting it. I told him, I said, why don't you come in? I said, I just was out there last week. I took some pictures of it. It's a 2011. It's only 88,000 miles on it, and it looks great. And he thinks that possibly it could be repurposed, and they're taking a look at it. And they're going to bring in IT, everybody else to kind of take a look at something like that. And I know the camper's been a little cumbersome. They haven't hooked up the camper and pulled it out and had it go someplace. They just thought this would be mobile-wise, it's just easy to access and get going and stuff like that. They never have enough room. Exactly, yeah. Next, we have the Public Work and Boat Launch Report Committee. I have a presentation of the Public Works May 2023 Multi-Activity Report, and that's all, Mayor. Okay. We'll go to our Storm and Water Report Committee. Thank you, Mayor. I'm not sure if my mic is hot. It feels kind of cold. I don't know if you can hear me. All right, very good. It's dead. There you go. That'll work. All right, we have a lead service line inventory grant update and discussion with regard to an online survey and offering gift card incentives to improve survey response. Commissioner Treibin, is there anything you want to elaborate with this? Just per Trustee McLaughlin's request, this is an odd expenditure, and we're looking to get some discussion on whether or not you're okay with this type of expenditure to help us improve the survey response from our residents. This funding is coming from the $50,000 grant we received from the EPA for performing this inventory, and one of the difficulties is we not only have to identify the service line portion that is owned by the village, which is from the water main to the bee box, but we also need to know what the service material is going into the home. And so our employees, as they're going in and changing meters, have been identifying service materials in the homes, but we haven't been in every home. So the more we can identify, the more clear our inventory can be, 
and to prove that we don't have any lead and don't have to do any further remediation. Do you have an idea in the number of homes that your people have not been able to remove? Around 2,000. <coughs> we have 40, or roughly 4,500 residence, residences in town. We've replaced the meters in 2,500 of them, and we still have 2,000 to go. Mm. Yeah, it's been slowed down with uh, the inability to uh, get water meters, and now now we can get water meters, but we can't get the FlexNet radios. So supply chain issues, just like everybody else. But are there any questions? And so it was just you know just throwing a number out there of you know exp expensing about five thousand dollars. So it'd be you know one in forty chance if all two thousand people responded, you know to the survey. In, in June, you and I were talking about this. Did you, any other, did you get kind of maybe just a couple of examples of other communities that are doing this right now? Yeah, and so, and I provided it in the packet, is that you can see there's a, um, just a brochure for, this is from Bar Berwyn, and that QR code will actually, you know, if you, if you were to click on it, you could, you know, take you right to the actual survey and see what, you know, it's about basically what we're asking the residents to do is identify the service line material simply by scraping the pipe so that it's you know it removes any um, patina on there so that we can see the underlying surface whether it's bright silvery color or nice and copper color which we're expecting most to be and they'll take uh, several photos of that upload that directly and this is all can be done through their phone Which, and Danny, and again for folks that are watching us, which line are they looking to test? In? The the service line for the water line coming in. in the house. Correct, and so right, so you know, right, right where the water the meter, meter is. So right where your water meter is. Correct. So yeah. just below the water meter is the, the pipe we're looking to identify. Okay. Mm-hmm. Okay. I'm gonna say mine's not copper. Oh, it's definitely copper. <laughs> <laughs> we'll check it out for you. All right. Well, it's a great, uh, it's a great concept. Dan brought this to me, and certainly we need all the help we can get. And again, well, this is uh, affordable through the grant program, and this is allowed through the grant program as well. Too. Correct, and we have to basically submit our final inventory by next April. So we want to identify through records and, and as much hand, you know, in-person you know, inspection as we can to provide the best inventory. Thank you, Dan. All right, thank you. Um, all right, now we had we had the uh, building and health just before anything else. No, that'll do it. Thank you, Mayor. Okay. Uh, Human Resources and Insurance Trustee Murphy. No report tonight, Mayor. Okay, we get started in the morning. We start. She'll be starting on the nineteenth. Uh, next, we have the Special Committee reports, Trustee, I'm sorry, uh, Economic Development Committee. No report, Mayor. Right. Uh, thank you, Village Properties, Trustee McLaurin. I have no official report this evening, Mayor. However, I want to let everybody know that I just received an exterior report at 430 this afternoon, so I want to have a meeting. Okay. Ordinance and legislation, Trustee Brock. No report this evening, Mayor.
pursuant to 5 ILCS 120, Chapter 2. I'll make that motion. Second. Motion to adjourn to closed session. Trustee Dizelle. Yes. Trustee Mendoza is absent. Trustee McGovern. Yes. Trustee Murphy. Yes. Trustee Nova Esparza is absent. Trustee Correa. Yes. Thank you. Time now is 825 p.m. And again, we appreciate